What's up? I'm Alex, the entrepreneur. Today I'm talking to you about the config folder, which is basically a new way in which you can deal with configuration files with Strapi. This is an introduction that happened as, the, as of the release of the stable version of Strapi, and I'm gonna guide you through this process. Uh, specifically, your configuration will now be in files. That means that instead of uh, having to set up uh, um, multiple files uh, and folders uh, speci specifying a specific environment, your configuration will actually be in a single file uh, on a, a topic based on a specific topic. And we're gonna go deeper in a second. And then these files will use module.exports, which means that it's using very um, usual syntax. And as such, you're gonna be able to use process or at least read into the process.env.node underscore env variable to determine which environment you're working on and as such, export the proper configuration. Additionally, Strapi is also coming equipped with the ability of parsing uh, EMV files, which means that uh, anytime you run a new install, this install is very fresh and it has to do with uh, uh, a part of the course that I'm rebuilding, which is the, uh, the initial introduction as well as the deployment on Heroku. So if you're waiting on that, it's coming out uh, real soon. Okay, it's probably coming out before the start of next week. But basically, uh, the uh, Strapi will actually be able to read .env files, so you can literally rename this uh, example file that you'll find as soon as you install Strapi, and uh, that will mean that Strapi will now be able to read uh, this data. So uh, for your local and uh, development setup, this is uh, definitely a, an improvement. Additionally, uh, you're gonna have your configuration files. So this is uh, uh, how you will see your database configuration file if you were to use quick start when you install Strapi. So let's look at the folder first. The folder is gonna be the config folder, which is something that you already had. But instead of having the environments and then a bunch of files, you can just have your configuration files in here. And you can see that we have two configuration files that are very relevant. One is called server, the other one is database. The reason why you wanna, uh, you want the server one is because server will allow you to specify uh, very important stuff. The most important one that we will we'll definitely use in the course is the cron, and you can set that up by setting cron to enabled and true. And so this is as simple as it gets with setting up your, uh, your uh, basic configuration files. Uh, I'm gonna be pointing you toward um, Strapi documentation if you need more specific information on uh, the file. For the server, for example, you can use host and port, which are very basic. Then you can have uh, uh, proxies, cron, admin URL. So these are very uh, basic and yet vital uh, setup configurations. Then, and that's basically the server.js file. Then you're gonna have uh, your functions, which uh, nothing has changed there. Then you're gonna have your bootstrap.js, which is basically a custom way to boot or something that you do when you boot your Strapi instance, which is also a usual part. Cron we're gonna talk about later. But then the, the main change is that the way you configure your database has moved from slash config, slash environment, slash name of environment, slash uh, database.js to simply in a file called database.js. So if you install Strapi right now with quick start, this is the file that you're gonna have. You're gonna have a default connection and then given the connection, it's gonna, which is basically the default one, you're gonna have your connector, which is basically the name of the plugin or the ORM that allows you to interact with the database. And then you're gonna have your settings for the client and how that's set up. In this case, it's just bookshelf with a local uh, database file. That's very simple. Now, you may wanna develop, and that's something that we cover in the, the, in the deployment of your application to Heroku, but you may want to have separated environments between your development environment and your production environment. And the, the simplest way to do that is what is literally what I'm gonna show you right now. So first of all, and I'm gonna open this other file called database.js. Let's look at it for a second and then we're gonna write it together. But basically, you can see that I have basically the, the setup to work with uh, uh, Postgres, PG. Uh, I basically already set up the code so that I can use PostgreSQL which is done by using the, the same connector, which is called Bookshelf, but having a client called Postgres, and then having all of my variables called host, port, database, username, and password. And they're gonna be, uh, you can see this EMV function, 
which is actually passed from the module.exports here. So basically the module.export is exporting a default function that receives a parameter called EMV. This parameter EMV is basically a way for you to get process.emv.name of variable uh, with a, a default value. So if uh, database if process.emv.database host exists, so it will literally the, the host here, this line, is the equivalent of typing host colon process.emv dot database underscore host question mark and then process dot emv dot database host colon and then the uh, the default value so this is basically the same thing but it's done with a function that makes it a little nicer and uh, so that's really that and um, you can always refer to the documentation for how to deploy or how to look at the default uh, setup or technically you could also just run a, another install without the quick start flag to get this doc built for you however Once you once you do that once you have your configuration So you have a, your different configuration the next part is to use a conditional We can use a very simple conditional here on line 2 and the conditional is saying if EMV no DMV So get me this uh, variable called no DMV if it's triple equal to development then use the bookshelf connector so that you can get your data with bookshelf otherwise if the development is if the env node environment is not development then use the postgres based connector and i'm going to show you a demo of, of this i've um, i don't think i actually have uh, injected any variables so uh, but but i'll be able to demo the behavior anyway so i'm going to open my terminal and i'll navigate to this project first strap it up and then what we can do is to run it locally I can just type npm start or npm run dev or develop my bad and so I can run it with develop and you can see that the environment is development and that means that the database that I'm using is bookshelf with SQLite on the other hand if I type no DMV node underscore DMV equal to production and then I type uh, npm run and I could even type npm run develop to be fair the environment will be blah 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 basically we it, this breaks why does it break it breaks because we're trying to connect to the bookshelf which I don't have an instance of uh, uh, we're trying to connect to the Postgres database of which I don't have an instance so it's basically failing so that means that it's using this connection here you can also verify that by looking at the port which is 27017 and so hopefully this gives you an idea of how you set up your custom configuration in the course I go through this specifically I show you how to go from scratch to actually have this entire setup in the part in which we develop to Heroku this should be we deploy to Heroku this should be live in uh, less than a week probably by the beginning of next week so keep in uh, keep uh, keep tuned you know and uh, have an amazing day.